G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, here's a very interesting story and highlights, again, the main problem with Ethereum. You know, I don't want to bash Ethereum, but it's got a couple of issues that it really needs to get on top of for it to really, you know, become the behemoth that we all believe it's going to be. But yeah, transactions hit an all-time historical high amid a DeFi boom. Well, it's also to do with Uniswap, but, you know, DeFi as well. But let's have a read. Daily transactions on the Ethereum blockchain have just recorded a new all-time high amid the general surge of congestion on the network. On September 17th, the amount of daily transactions on the Ethereum network amounted to 1,406,000, according to data from major Ethereum browser Etherscan. This is the highest number of daily transactions ever recorded on the Ethereum network. According to Etherscan, the previous all-time high was on the 4th of January 2018, reaching about 1,350,000 no, transactions on the day. So, it's broken new all-time high, and it is super slow and super expensive to do a transaction on Ethereum at the moment. Anything to do with a smart contract, uh, it's going to cost you a fortune, an absolute mint. <sighs> Layer two will not come quick enough. I know everyone's, you know, just you know, hanging for this, you know, uh, Ethereum 2.0. And look, part of Ethereum 2.0 is scaling, but the first part of it, it's just about the staking. So we really need layer two to come on board. And the sad thing is, there's a number of layer two solutions out there. They're just not being mass adopted by uh, anything. So I know Maddox working on some stuff and it's been really popular. Loopring, uh, OMG Network, uh, XDI Stake. Now, a lot of these are working, but again, just no one has adopted them. None of the major exchanges and that are going to use them. And you know, none of the real major sort of platforms have uh, decided to use them either. So, uh, you know, I love Ethereum and I'm still buying Ethereum, but unfortunately I just can't do anything with it really. I'm just holding it for the sake of, you know, staking some when I can and selling the rest when I can. I can't actually afford to use any smart contract platforms, whatever, like Synthetics Network, forget about it, I can't do it. It's gonna cost me, you know, anywhere from sort of 40 bucks to you know nearly a hundred dollars to try and do a smart contract transaction on there so yeah it just wipes everything out uh, and that's really disappointing and i really hope that ethereum is going to get on top of this sort of stuff and you know again the quicker we can roll out uh ethereum 2.0 you know the somewhat the better as long as it's all in working order i mean if it's not in working order then obviously they don't want to roll it out because that would just be disastrous but wow, the Ethereum network at the moment, it is just clogged and the, the fees, they're just way too expensive unless you're, you know, fairly heavy in the game and you can afford, you know, $50, $60 or more a transaction. Then, you know, if you're, if you're like me and an everyday average Joe sort of user, then you can't afford to use the Ethereum network and that's disappointing. But it is what it is. Let's go have a look at CoinGecko. There we go. This was at 60 something, 80 something the other do, uh, the other day. So uh, gas fees, 220. Ouch. I'm not even bothering trying to use uh, Ethereum at the moment. I'm not going to go anywhere near it. I'm just going to have to basically wait until, you know, I'm not even sure what might happen. <laughs> you know, ETH 2.0 gets rolled out or some, you know, layer two solution suddenly gets rolled out. But yeah, again, currently at the moment, I just can't afford to use it. And that's really disappointing. But what we can see is Bitcoin. We are just hovering around that 11K mark. We, you know, we can wick past it, but there's no, being cl no clean candle bodies that are going above it at the moment. But Ethereum... You know, 380, we're getting back close to that $400 mark again, so doing well. And look, there has been a couple of movers. Uniswap, there we go, 70% in 24 hours. That's pretty good, in all honesty. But unfortunately, uh, I didn't use Uniswap ever, so I didn't get any of the free tokens. Uh, and just be very careful if you go and buy some uh, tokens off any exchanges. 
I'm not saying there can't be any money made, but I'm just, you know, I'd be somewhat skeptical about uh, the price hike at the moment. If you, you know, got in earlier, sweet, but there's a good chance, you know, this will pull back uh, fairly substantially. But we can see uh, sushi was up. <laughs> I wouldn't touch sushi with your money. But anyway, if you want to invest in it, go right ahead. And there we go, loop ring up 24%. So that's good. Neo, well done. Uh, VE chain, Theta Network, Ample Forth. So we've definitely got some movers. The market is, you know, looking promising again. But, you know, while Bitcoin hangs under that $11,000 mark, I am somewhat cautious that we might roll over. So let's go over here. We have a look at our old trusty chart again. And again, the volume, it's just, yeah, there's not a lot of volume at the moment. The volume is low. And we, again, as soon as we get near that $11,000 mark, it, it just sort of stays there, you know. It, it won't go above it at the moment. And if it does, again, it's just wicks and pulls right back. But it is the start of Friday uh, over in the United States, and we are just under that $11,000 mark. So it is definitely possible that, you know, we break out and go above. But, you know, it is possible that we sort of roll over and probably realistically come back and test this $10,500 level wouldn't be a bad idea because we kind of broke through it and haven't sort of retested it uh, as support. You know, we almost sort of did back here, but other than that, we never tested it uh, for support. And it's a fairly key uh, sort of point in the price. So maybe if it rolls over and comes back and tests this 10,500 and uses it as support, that might be a more bullish kind of uh, structure. But look, hey, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. It could absolutely just go, you know, crazy from here and pump up really hard. There's a lot of places that are sort of expecting it. They think that, you know, the pressure's sort of been building and it's a bit like a kettle and it's ready to just explode. But, you know, that's certain people's opinions. No one really knows for sure. If they did, then they'd just absolutely be nailing the market in every single trade they did. So it's, it's a bit of a guessing game. You know, you'd have to be able to read the mindset of, you know, the big players and the little players uh, and then be able to, you know, I guess work out what the moves will be from there. Uh, and if you ever figure it out, you know, and you can do it consistently, let me know. I'd be interested to speak to you because <laughs> I'd love to know as well. Unfortunately, I haven't quite made it there. But again, I'm pretty happy with how I go in the crypto market. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm in profit. Uh, and I haven't made any really horrible decisions. You know, I definitely have made some decisions that haven't paid off, and I've got a number of my cryptos uh, that are definitely in the red at the moment, but I believe we're in a bull market. I believe we're very early in a bull market. I've got plenty of time for those to turn around, and I'm an investor, not a trader anyway. You know, if it takes me seven, eight months for it to just sort of break even again, then I'm happy to wait that long. Uh, and, and again, the ones that are in the red for me, they're smaller trades, they're not my big ones. All my big ones are in profit, and so I'm happy with that. Not that I have any, you know, super major positions, but, you know, my bigger positions, I should say, they're all in the green, and they've been doing quite well. So things like XRP, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Chainlink, uh, yeah, they're kind of my bigger ones. And even Litecoin, Litecoin hasn't done as well, but I did pick up a few Litecoin, and they're in the green, so that's always good. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble on for too long. So it's Friday night here, sort of Friday morning over in the States. Again, you know, on weekends we can expect to see a sell-off at times, but not always. Sometimes it does the complete opposite and we'll, you know, have a massive pump through the weekends. But traditionally, we see a bit of a sell-off. So again, maybe that's where we see the sell-off and we come back and retest this $10,500 level. We'll just have to wait and see. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.